After a cow has been identified as requiring assistance with calving, we must first prepare the cow for palpation. It is important to clean the cow and work area of any manure or other debris that could be introduced into the reproductive tract and potentially cause reproductive issues. Once the cow is prepared, the producer must also prepare themselves. This will include a thorough hand washing, use of proper palpation gloves, and a warm soapy water mix with lots of lubricant. Using a bare arm not only puts the cow at risk for infection, but also puts the palpator at risk of contracting disease pathogens from the cow. There are conditions that need to be evaluated before beginning the process of delivering a calf. First, in order for a calf to be delivered, the cervix must be open. If your hand is running into a blind sack, the cervix is not properly opened and is not ready for a calf to be born. Once the cervix is open, the calf can be assessed for positioning. A normal calf presentation is an anterior position, with a head and two front feet visible or palpable in the birth canal. If a calf presents in a posterior position, it must have a tail and two hind feet palpable. The producer must be able to run a hand between the calf's body and the pelvis of the cow to ensure it will fit. If you are unable to do this, it is likely that the cow will require veterinary assistance. A calf may be alive or dead. This can usually be determined by placing a finger in the mouth of the calf, squeezing the tongue, or touching the eyelids. If it is determined by a producer's initial examination that a calf is not in a normal presentation, steps will need to be taken to readjust the limbs and or head position of the calf until it can present in the birth canal in either the anterior or posterior delivery position. Palpating a calf can be confusing. It is important to be able to envision the position of the calf so one can reposition it to a normal calving presentation for a safe assisted birth. When evaluating legs, it is helpful to remember that if you are dealing with a front limb, the first two joints will bend in the same direction, whereas if you are dealing with a hind limb, the first two joints will run in opposite directions. When dealing with a head back position, the calf will need to be pushed back into the uterus by gently applying pressure when the cow is not contracting. Then the head can be slowly brought into position. By grasping the muzzle, the ear, or the lower jaw, or by placing the thumb and middle finger in the eye sockets, the head can be raised and redirected into the pelvis. Do not pull hard on the jaw because the jaw can be easily broken. If it becomes necessary to pull on the jaw or head, try to do it by hand or use a calving snare. If a snare is used, apply the loop behind the pole and through the mouth. Protect the birth canal from laceration by the calf's sharp teeth by guiding the head with your hand. After the head and neck have passed through the cervix, traction should be applied to the legs only. In the case of retained limbs, again repel the calf back into the uterus by applying gentle pressure on the calf's chest while the cow is resting. Then the limb should be grasped just above the fetlock and bent at the knee. Now push the bent knee toward the spinal column and push back so as to bend all the joints of the limb. Meanwhile, the hand is gradually moved down the limb toward the fetlock. Then grasp the hoof by placing your hand over the hoof capsule in order to protect the soft tissues of the birth canal. Now raise the fetlock over the pelvic brim and the leg can move forward. Now that the calf is coming in a normal position, chains can be applied to the legs. But one must always remember the rule of three. Only attempt to deliver a calf if you have two front legs and a head or two hind legs and a tail. It is important to properly place the chains in a double half hitch. To attach the chain, loop it around the thin part of the leg above the fetlock. Then make a half hitch and tighten it below the joint and above the foot. Make certain that the chain is positioned in such a manner that it goes over the top of the toes. In this way, the pressure is applied so as to pull the sharp points of the calf's hooves away from the soft tissue of the vaginal wall. When pulling a normal presentation calf, use the seesaw method by pulling one leg at a time. This way, a wide-chested calf will enter the birth canal at an angle, easing delivery. During a difficult delivery, a manual calving jack can be used, but remember never use more than 250 pounds of force or the strength of two people pulling at once, and always pull with a cow's contractions, never against them. 
Traction on the forward-facing calf in the early stages should be exerted upward in the direction of the tailhead and not downward. Once the calf is in the pelvic cavity, traction should be straight backward and then downward. The calf thus passes through the birth canal in the form of an arc. If the passage of the hind end of the calf presents any difficulty, the body of the calf should be grasped and twisted to an angle of about 45 degrees. Delivery is then made with the calf half turned on its side. This allows for easier passage of a calf with well-developed stifle joints. If a calf is presenting in a posterior or backwards position, it is helpful to cross the legs when pulling in order to rotate the calf's hips and avoid hip lock between the calf and cow's hips. Of most importance is to know when to help, when to quit, and when it is time to call the veterinarian.